Okay, so we're given this uh, two-set Venn diagram, and then we're going to uh, find out what's inside. Well, the first two ask how many, but we got like mystery, like fantasy. We got both, and then we got a like none. Survey of, of students' likes in literature. So how many students like fantasy? Well, it's pretty simply... those right there and it doesn't say which ones it just says how many and there's one two three four in there all right how many students like both there's both There's your both. So there are exactly two in there. Which students do, do, do not like mystery? All right. So here's the mystery uh, circle. Right there. So anything outside of that circle, which includes... This one, this one, and this one. Well, those people don't like mystery. And this time they're asking which ones they are. So it's Ashley, Maria, and Omar. So select all the genres that, uh, so this is just the same thing. It's a three set. So we got three now, satire, fi fantasy, and uh, romance, and then out here is none. So select all the genre that Abdul does not like. All right. So Abdul is hiding right in here. There's Abdul. So he's in the satire and romance section. So the genres that he don't does not like are fantasy. Because he likes romance. He likes satire. He just happens to like both. How many students only like romance? So again, here is only romance. That little piece of pie there. All right. So there are three students. that like only romance. And then uh, they're asking at the last one, which doesn't like either one or neither. That's these four guys on the outside because we don't know what they like, but they know uh, like set, they don't like either one of the three. So we got Deandra. Lashanta, Chris, and Pablo. Okay. <coughs> so here's one. We're just going to drag everything where it's supposed to go. It's a two set Venn diagram. And, um, what I would do first is just look what's common between W and X. And it looks like it's A and E. So A and E. <clears throat> A and E 
are in both. So then we can go back and just look at W, and we got to have an A, which we have. We got to have a C. We need to have a D. We've already got an E. We need to have an F. And we need to have a G. So now we've got everything out inside of W we need. We got A, C, D, E, F, and G. And then on the outside is what's uh, what else is left in X. We got A, E, and so we need to have... Oh, okay. This is going to be one of those that's... Um... that's fully contained. So X, the blue, is fully contained there. There we go. And then the B, goes out here, and so does the H. Because what happened, what happened is, okay, A and E are in X and W. And then W has the four Oh, I'm sorry, the G is here also. There we go. So X has A, E, and G, and these are also in W. So this is what we call a proper subset because X is contained completely within W. And then the ones that are outside of both are the B and the H. B and H. So similar kind of thing. So we're just going to have three of them. So look for the intersection of all three. And it looks to be A is in all three. Not B, not C. Not E. D's in two of them. So it looks like A is the only one in all three. <clears throat> so let's just start back up at the top with with W. So we got a, a C that's got to be in there. Oops, it's between, I'm sorry, W and Y has the C. There we go. W and Y has C. It also has D. I believe that's it between those two. So Y and Z, well, they already have the A. And then they need the E. Everything else is unique to one or the other. And now W and Z, they have the A. We've already got that. Z. And then we need the I. So that's all the ones that are common. So now let's go back up to W and see which ones we're missing. We got A, C, D. And we need to have G. G is in W only. Y has A. And we need to have B. C, D, and E are now all in Y, so we got that. And Z has A, E, H, and I, so H goes here in Z only. And F is the only one that's not in either one of those.
All right, this is the culmination of chapter two. Uh, what we have here is a survey of uh, 691 students. So all eight of the values in here, when we get them all in, should add up to 691. So they give us the 286 drink milk. So all four of those are going to have to add up 286, 73 drink soda. 112 drink milk, but neither one. 127 drinks coffee. Well, come on. I'm, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to the bottom and working my way up. That's usually the best way to do it. 89 drink both milk and coffee, but not soda. 56 drink both milk and soda, but not coffee. And then lastly, 622 drink at least one of these three. All right, so 622 are the seven inside the circle. So to find what this one is, we can take the 691 minus all of the inside. So then 69 would be right here. That's the ones that drink none of these. All of these in here, We'll add up to 622 when it's said and done, and they will be you at know, least one. 622 minus what? What's that? You done 622 minus what? See it? Yeah. The number from okay. up here. I'm subtracting the 622 from the one at the top, and I'm just going to keep working my way up. 56 of the students drink both milk and soda. So milk and soda, but not coffee, would go here, and that is 56. 56 drink both milk and soda, but not coffee. Eighty-nine drink both milk and and coffee, but not soda. Milk and coffee, but not soda. 127 of the students drink coffee, but neither milk nor soda. So see, we're getting them as we go up. Sometimes we may have to subtract. Let's see what's going to happen on this one. 112 drink milk, but neither coffee nor soda. Seventy-three students drink soda, but neither milk nor coffee. So this is the soda only. So 73 goes in there. All right, now we're getting close here. We only got one more really left. Well, actually we got, uh, we may have to reuse one. I think we're gonna reuse, uh, yeah, we'll use that one. We, we've used it once, but we can use it again. So 286 drink milk. So all four of these have to add up to 286. I already have inside of here a 112, an 89, and a 56. So 257 already. I want it to be 286, so let's see what I'm missing. See, there's the 257. That's these three. And I'm subtracting that from what needs to be in there. And so 29 goes right there. All right. We could actually use the 691 
And then we're only missing one, so let's add all of them up. See what we're missing, because we know they've got to add up to 691. So 629, 127, 29, 89, 73, 56, 112. So all of them on the, uh, add up to 555. And we want it to be 691. So 136 drink soda and coffee only. Answer the, the questions. Well, there's just one question. So we're going to find out how many drink soda. They're the ones that drink soda. It's the blue circle. I tried to also circle it again. It's hard to get the exact same thing with this thing. So we're just going to add all four of those up. And that tells us how many people drink soda. 56 plus 73 plus 136 plus 29. So 294 drink soda. Questions about this? So Can you tell me how you got the 29 again? What that? Can you tell me how you got 29 for all three again? Because the they gave us these three. We figure out these three first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we subtracted and they told us that 280, they had to add up to 286, the milk. See, that has to add up to 286. Okay. So, when we got up, we were coming from the bottom. When we got up to that 286, we had the 89, the 112, and the 56. So, we added those up and subtracted from 286 to figure out that 289 was missing. Okay. All right. So, uh. So here's the uh, chapter three, the logic stuff. We're looking for statements. It's very similar to the idea behind the well-defined set. We are looking for something that has the ability to be either true or false. So a question or a command will not be a statement. So no and no this is a question this is a command so the other ones that are statements are these plants are black the mouse is a type of flower and eight plus five is 13. again it doesn't matter if it's a true or false statement it just matters whether it can be one or the other So we want to find the negation. So we don't want to vary from this. Anyone that's a, a, a negation is going to have bookshelf in it. Okay. So anything with anything else in it is a no. So table. Automatically we can rule that out. So now we want to find out. So. If the statement is the sign is on the bookshelf, we need to either have the sign is not on the bookshelf, or we can also negate it by putting in front the negation statement of it is not the case or it is false that the sign is on the bookshelf. 
So there we go. In this case, there are two negations for the sign is on the bookshelf. All right, so we want to write these in symbolic form. P is it is raining, and Q is Dan is wearing a hat. So this is just going to be P or Q. There's P, it is raining, or is the little V, and Dan is wearing a hat is Q. Dan is wearing a hat, so that's Q. And what symbol is this? It's the and, and that would be P. Both of them are in the affirmative. There's no negation. This is just not wearing a hat. And there we go. So now this is the conditional and the biconditional. So if it is not snowing, P is, it is snowing. So it's going to be not P. It's an if then, so it's the arrow. And it is not wearing gloves, so that's not Q. This is just uh, Kayla is wearing gloves if and only if it is snowing. All right, so uh, we're given a conditional statement. If a person is pregnant, then the person is a female. All right, so the way I like to do it is I start with my converse, and the converse is just where you turn them around. So that means that female is going first now, and pregnant is going to be second. Now... I go to the inverse is my next one that I like to do. And that one, it just negates in the same order. So that would be not pregnant and not female. And then the contrapositive, these will be in different orders. But as I said, yes, the way I like to do it, to go through it, is converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Because... Um, it's, it's a matter of difficulty. If you do it in that direction, you're not biting off too big of a chunk each time. All right. So now the contrapositive is going to be the converse order negated. So not female, not pregnant. Okay, how about that one? So this one is a truth table. This is just asking for the basic ones. We need the and and the not. The negation is just the opposite. So that would be false, false, true, true. This is the and. So that's true, false, false, false. And then this one is requiring us to create a true table, but it takes a couple of steps. So the first thing that I'll put in is the inside of that. And that's just the basic one. That's true, false, true, true. And then this is the negation of it. So it's false, true, false, false. All right, questions? So you're always going back to the basic ones to build whatever your statement is. All right, uh, that's the same one. We can come back if you want to see that one, but 
I think there's also a repeat of this one, but we'll do this one. All right, complete the following. Truth table, use T. So we got to build this thing left to right. So inside out, left to right. So inside, I got the Q or P there that we got to handle. So I'm using this little thing to build the Q or P. So that's true, 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 false. Or is true in three out of the four cases, the only time it's false is when both are false. Okay, now we got to negate it. So that's just the negation of that one to the left. So false, 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 true. All right. So we need to have, uh, let's see. I'm going to come back over here. And then do the not P. I just kind of want, don't want to get too far away from the P because it's easy to read the wrong column. All right, so that's the negation of P. And then I'm going to put the Q here because since we're dealing with that conditional, the order matters. So I don't want to read backwards if I don't have to. And then I'm going to put here the not P arrow Q. So I'm looking at these two here and I'm applying the conditional rule. And remember, the conditional is only false when we've got order true false. And in this case, the first three are true. This one right there on the last column, I mean the last row is the false one. So now I've got both of these and I'm using the biconditional rule and the biconditional is simply, if they're the same, it's true. None of these are the same. So this is false, 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 false. What can we say about this? Is this a tautology or a contradiction? A tautology is true for all possible combinations of P and Q. This one right here would never be true. Same thing with the contradiction. The contradiction is false for all possible combinations of P and Q. This one would never be true because that's not the right definition. So that's the answer to this. This is what we call a contradiction. All falses, all falses. If you've just got one T in there or you've got all T's and one false, then it's a neither. All falses is a contradiction. All trues is a tautology. And that's the key word is all, all. Okay, so this is the one that uh, you was asking about, Jordan, right? Yes, sir. All right. All right, so let me, uh, just to show you that, we're, uh, that I'm not making this stuff up. All right. Here's the things that we need here that will help us. All right. We need these two things. We need to have this one because it is a conditional statement and we got to take the first step with that circle one. Then the uh, De Morgan's laws will be useful for um, the negation. And then also down here, 
the conditional statement and the contrapositive are equivalent. See, they got the same order. So those are the three things we're going to use. I'm going to use the contrapositive. And then I'm going to use this one here. And then the Morgan's Laws. As I was saying, is this is the harder one. All right. So I'll write those things down in a second. So the one we need is if P then Q is equivalent to not P or Q. Okay. So P, let's put let, uh, this be uh, Donna is practicing soccer. So let P be Donna and Q be Bob. So then the original statement's going to be if not P, then not Q. I'll tell you what, let me put it right up here. So this is, if not P, then not Q. All right. Now, this is just from doing this, because there's got ands and ors in there, then I'm going to convert it using this here i'm going to convert it using this so i'm going to take mine which happens to be already negated at the ends and i'm going to follow this pattern in other words i'm going to take my p over in this case a not p and i'm going to negate it so the arrow becomes an or And then the Q just comes over as it is. So it's a negation for ours. So that's what it's going to be. So this ends up being P. Because not negation, negation is just going to be P or not Q. Now, is that one in there? Donna is practicing soccer, or Bob is not reading, right? So there's an equivalent right there. There's an equivalent. All right, now I'm going to use De Morgan's law on this to negate it. In other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use De Morgan's law, so I'm going to negate. P or not Q. And what, remember, what, uh, neg uh, that does is, is it um, passes on to both and it changes the or to an and. So we're going to pass it on to both. So that's not P and not, not Q. Which is not P and Q because it's negation, negation. 
So now this one should be a uh, negation here. Is that one in there? Donna is not practicing and Bob is reading. So there's your negation. All right, now we could probably uh, just do neither on the other two, but I'm gonna be safe. And I'm gonna use the fact that the conditional is equivalent to the contrapositive. Remember the contrapositive is just backwards. All right, so I'm gonna take ours, our original one up here, and I'm gonna turn it around and negate. Now it was already negated like an inverse, so I'm gonna turn it around So here's what I'm taking. All right. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to negate. So that ends up being Q. If Q, then P. Is that in there? If Bob is read his, reading, then Adana is practicing soccer. So that one right there is another equivalent. And then this one right here, uh, if Bob is not reading, then uh, Donna is not practicing soccer. That's actually the inverse. No, I'm sorry, it's the converse, so it's not. That's the neither. All right, I know that one's tough, so questions. Like I said, that's the hardest one here. No, oh, that was helpful, thank you. Like I said, the three key things you gotta remember are this one right here, you need the De Morgan's laws. Like I said, there's potentially the one for the and as well, but it but does the same thing. It changes the or to an and, so the and gets changes to the or. And then the contrapositive. Those are typically the ones that you're going to need to do these three. Sometimes they may not have this one, but I'm doing it to be safe. And yeah, it paid off that it was there. All right, that's that same one. All right, so here we got an argument. All right, so uh, sometimes it may help if we kind of uh, know there's like four valid arguments that they give us and four invalid ones. So uh, let's just set this up and see if we can figure out which one it is. And then we'll do the truth table with it to double check. All right. So uh, P is the conferences in London. Q is Maya. Maya is a presenter. So up here, if the conference is in London, then Maya is a presenter. So that's P. P then Q, the conference is not in London, so that's not P. Therefore, Maya is not a presenter. All right. What do you think about that argument? Is it valid or not? That's actually uh, the fallacy of the inverse. 
but an off chance that I'm wrong and wanting to get part B right, I'm going to have to do the truth table. Now, I'll just tell you a shortcut. If you recognize that this happens to be a valid argument, you can just, if, like for example, let's say it was not Q and not P. That's the the the, con, uh, the contrapositive argument. That's a valid form. We could just throw all T's in here and be done with it. But in this case, it's it's a it's not a valid argument. So I don't know what the truth table is going to be. I can kind of guess, but I don't know for sure. So I got to work out the truth table for this. So it's just the standard one. Oops. What happened? It's just the standard one. So the second one is a false one. The rest of them are true. We now need to have a not Q, I mean a not P. So that's false, false, true, true. And then I'm gonna put these together with and. So I'm putting these together with and. Uh, so this is got both of these have a false. So false, false, true, true. And that's the whole uh, left hand side. That's the antecedent. And then I'm going to put the not Q here. So that's just the opposite false. True, false, true. And then I'm just using the conditional. So false, false is true. False, true. It's true. And here's the false one. And I probably could have guessed that that's what it was, but because it's the fallacy of the inverse. So I could have guessed that that was where the false was. I don't say I could have guessed. I know that. I just wasn't that confident when we went through it. Plus, I wanted to show you again the truth table. So this is not a valid argument. Okay. The good thing about the last one, you don't, uh, they give you three statements and then they give you two and we'll just see if we can pick out the if it's a valid or not. So P is one is at the party, Q1 is wearing boots. And if we got a third one, it's one is uncomfortable. I don't think any of these have that. So if one is at the party, so that's if P then Q, There's Q, therefore P. And there we go. If P, then Q. One is wearing boots, it's Q. Therefore, one is at the party, therefore P. Well, this is the fallacy of the inverse, so... That's not valid. You could do a truth table if you're not sure. So if one is at the party, then one is wearing boots. So that's the same thing. If P, then Q. One is not wearing boots. That's not Q. Therefore, one is not at the party. And that, my friends, is the contrapositive argument, which is valid. That's the contrapositive. First part's the same, but the second premise is not wearing boots, not Q, therefore not P. That's the contrapositive because we can go from not Q to not P because that's the equivalent of the uh, conditional statement, the direct statement. All right, so now we're getting to our chapter 10. We got a little handful of questions here. These are pretty simple. We're just going to pull from the um, table here. What is the probability of getting a face card? 
I can't. Um... Here's the face color. So how many is that? Here's our denominator. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve over fifty-two. And then that simplifies down to six over twenty-six or three twelves. No, 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 twelves. Three three thirteenths. And you can kind of see that pattern here. See, there's 13 cards in one suit and three of them are face cards. So you can see in any one row the pattern of three to 13. Red card. Red card. So the red cards, I don't guess it's going to let me select them. So let's, uh, here are the red ones. How many is that over 52? Well, it's half the deck, 26 over 52. One half. The probability is a, a face card or a red card. Well, we're just going to find the ones that have that are red or a face card. So here's the red ones. Here's the face card ones. So we already know that there's 26 of the red ones there from part B. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six more. So that's uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, So that's thirty two over fifty two. So see sixteen over twenty six or eight thirteenths. Okay, here's that one, uh, same kind of thing, except that they're giving you a little chart to do it. So uh, we have five cards, one through five, three of them are white, two are, are gray. And here's the key right here. Let X be the event that the car drawn card is gray. So for this one, we click the two gray ones. And so there's two gray ones out of five. So X is the gray ones. Not X would be the white ones. And there are three of those, so three fifths. And notice how those, if you add up two and three, you get five. Five over five is one. Well, that's the idea behind the uh, complement rule. And that's what they're asking us to use right here. So one minus this one, the not P, gives us the other one.
and they're just asking us to fill in the blanks here. One minus the probability of not X is probability of X. So this is just the counting principle. So you got here, you got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, and three. So we're selecting the committee. So uh, they're going to have. So how many ways can they fill the five committee positions? Well, it's just a matter of multiplying these. So 7,500 ways. It's also called the multiplication principle because you multiply like that. All right. So pay attention on this one. This is the difference between your uh, combinations and your permutations. Order is not. Order is, so this is the C, this is the P. All right, so I'm just going to use the calculator real quick to do this. So the big number goes first always. Then I'm going to hit the C, and then I'm going to put in the 7. So 792. Same exact thing for this one. It's the exact same numbers. We're going to use 12. Except now, because we have order is taken, we're going to put the P in, and then we put the same 7. And notice how it gives us a much bigger number. And you would expect that because when order is taken into consideration, you will have more. No order C, order P. So this is another uh, one like that same thing, the first one. I'm sorry, let me back up. So this is uh, so this is the appetizers. You're selecting two from three. Again, that's a C. We're going to multiply. And then this would be your main courses. 12. Taking nine. And then desserts. Four. Taking two. And I can just throw this right in the calculator on this Alex one. So two from three, nine from 12, four from two. So 3,960. 3,
And then the last one, I think it's like a password kind of problem. Uh, suppose a company needs temporary passports for the trial of a new payroll software. We'll have uh, one digit followed by three letters. All right, and the rules are the letter uh, G will not be used. So for the letters, it's going to be, uh, oops, 25. Now, is there anything in here, oops, about repetition? That's what I was looking for before we... Yeah, so they can be repeated, so we don't have to do any subtraction. So then every one of these is going to be 25. And then the six digits. So then it's simply... Six times twenty five times twenty five times twenty five. So the number of passwords would be ninety three thousand seven hundred and fifty. And if it had said no repetitions, then we have to subtract out on the subsequent letters for the digits. It wouldn't matter since it's just one uh, uh, digit. So that's it, uh, and it's right about the end of class. So go get that midterm if you haven't done it. I'll be around hanging out here. And then uh, Thursday, we'll take back up on the uh, further climb into Chapter 10.